My point is John still believes his reputation and the lack of any evidence will exonerate him. He believes in the system. All he's asking for is fairness. Well, he shouldn't expect fairness, not from them. I mean, there's a reason they call it a witch hunt. The temptation to abuse absolute power is too tasty. Well, why, just look at Candace. Give her a, a telephone, telephone in the clip when she thinks she's Margaret Thatcher. But you never see it as abusive if you agree with him. It's only an abuse of power in the eyes of the dissent. Okay, okay, I get all that. But at some point, you gotta look around and see the world you're living in and find a way to survive. It's basic human instinct. Survival. Proctor could have just signed the damn paper, said he's a warlock, and skipped town with Liz. Start over. But he has no control over what happens after he gives in. If he just tells them what they want to hear, it gives them all the power because now they're in charge. The mistake he makes is letting them put him on the defensive. Well, wouldn't you be in his position? The council has no evidence, and John knows it. He doesn't have to prove he isn't a warlock. They have to prove that he is. Or he could simply remain silent. Why doesn't he just stay silent, refuse to participate in their little game? Because it's his name. Come on, it's all he has left. I mean, you're not testing integrity until you're doing it in hostile territory. Christ, do you people even get this guy at all? I mean, even if he dishes town, he'll always know the name John Proctor is worthless someplace, and he won't sleep at night. Go on, Fred. I've been listening to you hens clock about this stupid play for weeks now, and you've been missing the simplest concept, valuing honor over saving your own skin. That's what character is, people. But when Elizabeth lies to cover for John's adultery, is that a show of strength or weakness in her own character? She lies, she loses. Even though she didn't know it, if she'd have just told the truth, said he banged that cuckoo Abigail chick, they'd have been home in time for supper. You lie, you lose every time. I'm afraid history disagrees with that assessment, Fred. <laughs> history agrees? What again? Monica Lewinsky. You lie, you lose. They didn't lose because they lied. They lost because they got caught. Plenty of people in power have lied to save their own skin, but when it works, nobody ever knows. So what do you tell your students? I tell them if you want to make history, you need the strength of your convictions. As long as you win, you're celebrated. And if you lose? Then generally, you're forgotten entirely. If the Revolutionary War had turned out differently, George Washington would be a historical footnote who was hanged as a traitor, and we'd all have British accents. And better TV shows. BBC America kicks ass. And there she goes. Fred. You've inspired such lively discussion. Welcome to the book club. I'm not in your damn club. Well, you've obviously been paying attention. Nah, not really. I'll tell you something. I knew Mary Warren once. Yeah, ugly woman, no neck. My wife made our boy take piano from her for about a minute. He couldn't stand her, said her house smelled like onions. 